What's up guys, Andrew here on my channel Geared Inc, where I get to share what I'm passionate about with you. And my channel, that's PC Tech, Games, and Gear. Before we get into today's video, remember that there's less than a week left to enter the Razer headset giveaway going on the channel right now. No strings attached, that is just basically to plug uh, content for my Patreon who uh, helped me with my autism stream. So, if you haven't entered the giveaway already guys, make sure you do. So today we are talking about PC simulator and overclocking. Overclocking is one of those things that I've been doing now for a very long time and there are so many CPUs um, that are capable of overclocking GPUs. You can overclock even your monitor. Um, you, sometimes there's sound systems you can overclock. It's getting a little ridiculous, but in terms of being able to overclock, uh, literally if you have any Ryzen current gen CPUs, they're all capable of overclocking any K version from Intel for consumer base is also uh, capable of overclocking. And honestly, if you have those and you don't overclock, I hate you just a little bit. So when we're talking about this PC simulator, which basically what this is, is a game or simulator, I should say, that came out on Steam that allows you to make your dreams come true if you've always wanted to be a high-end PC builder, especially if you can't afford to do that in real life, and uh, kind of run like a shop. But it has a free build system and it comes with some benchmarking and overclocking tools. So I wanted to do a comparison with my system versus the system or as close as I could make it in PC Simulator and then do the overclocking and see really how similar is this or is this a good way if you don't know how to overclock to kind of learn. So the first thing is that I was shooting for a 4.4 uh, gigahertz overclock on my 2700X, which honestly I've never been able to hit and keep stable, but I wanted to see if we could do that in the PC simulator. Now for these systems side by side, I was able to match them up pretty identically. So we have roughly the same memory, uh, the same exact CPU, slightly different coolers, but it's the same size. We have a different motherboard, but it's the exact same chipset, and then everything else is more or less the same, which was pretty cool. This is normally what your uh, basically your BIOS where you overclock would look. You have things like CPU, volta uh, CPU voltage, your core clock speed, your RAM speed. Um, PC Simulator is going to be much more simplistic than this because when you're looking at this, you have also control of things like your sock voltage, your load, li uh, load line calibration, your RAM timings, all things that you would mess with if you're actually doing some more in-depth overclocking, none of which PC Simulator actually has. First thing I did is I went back in the system and I tried to get a stable overclock at 4.4 gigahertz. And while the system was able to boot, I ran into the same problem that when running any CPU intensive program, I crashed. I actually think that if I was if I was able to get a motherboard with the newest chipset for the 470 or 450, it might actually be stable enough to run, but unfortunately wasn't able to do that. So getting into PC Simulator, the first thing I wanted to do was kind of test out and see exactly um, how far we could push this. What was kind of fun was actually putting in the core speed, which is really all you can change in the voltage, it actually crashes similar to like what you would have in a real computer. So messing with that a couple of times and slowly increasing the voltage, the first thing that happens, we were actually able to get past the recommended safe voltage on my motherboard um, to a 1.5 to get it stable at 4.4. This is something to take into consideration because obviously on a regular motherboard, you wouldn't be ever going anywhere near that high. Now, in terms of looking at the actual um, percentages on things like the RAM, same thing, just kind of increase the overall uh, overall uh, voltage on that as well. And then when we finally got everything booted up, I started running the benchmark switch. It actually has like a 3D mark tool, which is cool. Now looking at the overall temperatures when I was benchmarking it inside PC Simulator, 95 degrees Celsius. I absolutely believe that if the CPU was pegged at 100% usage with that much voltage going to it and with eight cores and 16 threads, yeah, that seems pretty realistic to me. It didn't crash at all after um, finally finding stability. So first off, you know, that's kind of cool to see that you're actually able to kind of mess with it and find uh, something that would work and then once we I ran all the benchmarks it actually gave me a score so PC simulator is not necessarily the best representation because first off it's not real world in real world overclocking there are so many little variables you can mess with and there's so many variables you don't have control of like the silicon lottery or um, perhaps getting a bin cpu real world to pc simulator not at all like it doesn't they're not parallel however pc simulator does teach you the basics of overclocking which is great it teaches you how to mess with things like core clock and voltage also uh, manages to teach you how to kind of uh, slowly incrementally increase those things even though the voltage on there was way above what i would recommend to be safe and then it also teaches you just to kind of give it over your fear of overclocking because nowadays it's actually kind of hard to mess up your system especially with all the guidance out there on overclocking it's something that i can recommend everybody do because essentially you're just giving up free performance and it's very unlikely nowadays that you're actually going to damage your system unless you just completely disregard every sound piece of advice that's out there because there's a lot when it comes to this so is pc simulator uh similar to real life overclocking yes in that you can mess with some of the same settings and yes um it can teach you how to incrementally increase your voltages and uh, core clock and mess with those until you get it dialed in but no in every other sense of the word i mean
mean, there's no real world comparison. Uh, I was never able to hit 4.4 on my 2700X, at least on my current chipset, which is the 350 uh, B350. It is definitely not a good representation of what is actually real. So guys, this was a really fun video that I put together, at least for me. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and leave me a big thumbs up. But if you didn't, go ahead and leave me a thumbs down. But get subscribed, guys. We are growing every day. Remember 12,500 subs by 2019, and we're doing another giveaway on my channel. I may have one in between that for something completely unrelated, but you guys know me. I love to give away free stuff. I love to support the community that supports me. Thank you to everyone who supports me directly to uh, Patreon through Twitch. I do stream on the weekends. I'm a huge gamer. And thank you to everyone who continues to use my Amazon affiliate link. All that money goes right back into the channel. And if you are a Patreon supporter or a Twitch sub, you get access to our, our uh, kind of our section of our Discord where uh, you can interact with me, um, you know, more one-on-one. -on -one. And you also um, get a plug and the credits at the end of my videos. So if you want to support me, please do. But as always, guys, I'm going to make these videos whether you watch them or not. I hope to see all of you next time here on Geared Inc.